Hey guys, Ron here, and once again, evolution is a complicated topic, especially since the term evolution in regards to Pokemon can refer to spontaneous metamorphosis, like Pokemon evolution, but also natural selection, like how Alolan Pokemon have adapted and changed appearances and even types over time. In the real world, the theory of evolution via natural selection dictates how species of animals are created when animals evolve over thousands and millions of years, therefore becoming a new, slightly different animal. What if I applied this to Pokemon themselves and created an entirely different species of Pokemon that were ancestors of various other Pokemon, just like how modern day wolves and dogs share a wolf ancestor, or even how Archeops is an ancestor of all bird Pokemon. I'm also going to create transitional Pokemon based on my own speculative theories, the first being that the modern day Tepic family evolved from an extinct species of pig Pokemon that split off from the Swinub family. What would this missing link be? Let's create this extinct species of pig Pokemon right now. But before we move on ahead, when I say the word evolve, I'm talking about the real use of the word via natural selection over many generations, not Pokemon evolution. I'm also using it in a simple sense. Any actual scientists here, you, you, don't, you don't need to give me a lesson. This is all for fun. Now I know I want this Pokemon to be a fully formed pig. It evolved over many generations of Swinub. Perhaps as it moved away from the cold, it had no desire for thick fur, so its legs were revealed. This Pokemon lived in warmer locations, so it has much more competition for food. So it had to become more aggressive and feral. So maybe it lost its ice typing and became a fighting type. It has long tusks that are shared by both its ancestor, Mamoswine, and the Pokemon it becomes, Embor. Over many generations, the head plate on Mamoswine becomes the head design on Tepig, and it keeps the spikes of Swinub. It still has the remnants of fur that it had when it was part of the Swinub family. The question is, how much fur do we give it, and in what patterns? I decided that it keeps the rings around its eyes, like Mamoswine has, which make it more intimidating. It eventually becomes part of Tepig's black head spot a thousand years later. I decided to give it Mamoswine's feet, but eventually change it in the final design. Now it's time for a more refined sketch. Since this Pokemon is actually an adult, I decided to give it a more triangular nose, like Embor and Mamoswine. But the final design is actually a bit different. Here it is! I decided that this Pokemon did have split hooves, and I kept some of the Mamoswine's face bone, or whatever that white thing is, because it actually makes more sense for a wild Pokemon like this one, that attacks by headbutting, to have some hard bone on its forehead. It also makes it look much more ancient. This Pokemon is called Hoggressive. It's a ground fighting. It's very fast and powerful and has the sheer force ability, so a good bulldoze from this Pokemon will do some damage. Or you know, it, it could just use Earthquake. It evolved from the Swinub line and is the ancestor to Tepigs. As it became more domesticated, smarter, and lived in warmer temperatures, it harnessed fire abilities and became more docile. But unlike Tepig, Hoggressive is very hard to tame. That's it really. Next I thought it would make sense that both the Moonaline and Drowsy family split from some kind of Tapir ancestor. They're both psychic to peers, so it would make sense for them to have evolved from the same Pokemon. I'm gonna start by simply giving it the face of a Tapir, which is what Drowsy looks like. But like Musharna, this Pokemon releases psychic mist from its third eye. But instead of a dream mist, it has hypnotic bubbles. And like Muna, this Pokemon floats, but has the fur of a Hypno. In fact, according to my lore, it is Hypno who gets its fur from its ancestor, and the pattern on its stomach is pretty much a combo of the patterns on Drowsy, Muna, and Musharna. Again, their patterns come from this guy's patterns. And now I'm just refining it all. I realized that the bubble pattern it has, which becomes flower patterns after thousands of years of evolution, makes sense since it releases hypnotic bubbles, not dream mist. And here is the final design. This is Mesmer from Mesmerizing and Tapir. It lived thousands of years ago and used its dream bubble, which rapidly spin and change colors, to put foes to sleep. It's very crafty and tricky, but not too crazy. It has the ability synchronize or magic bounce. Over time, this species split into two groups. Those that became crazier began to walk and lost their powerful dream bubbles, and the other group, which stayed afloat and even put themselves to sleep, which made them more calm and strengthened their psychic abilities, even allowing them to release mist that revealed the dreams of others. Next, I decided to create a missing link between Dunsparce and the Onyx family. I created a theory that Onyx has evolved from Dunsparces, after all, Dunsparce is a burrowing short snake, so let's make something in between the two. 
a Dunsparce has three segments, so I just added an extra one, which literally made the base for a fusion of Dunsparce and Onyx. This Pokemon evolved from Dunsparce, so it has the spikes on its jaw, but also one on its head like Onyx. The spikes on its jaw eventually become the spikes on Steelix's jaw, and the wings on Dunsparce have become the spikes that eventually become the ones on Steelix tens of thousands of years later. I mean, there are so many similarities between Dunsparce and Steelix already that it made sense for there to be a missing species linking the two. Now, I'm basically just experimenting with the rock patterns it has, and here it is, the final design. Say hello to Slitherth. It evolved from a specific group of Dunsparce that were able to dig much faster. Eventually, they began to live exclusively underground, became bigger and stronger, and eventually were born with tougher and tougher skin resembling rocks. But they're pure ground type. It has the ability weak armor or rattled. Both are abilities that raise its speed when hit or frightened. Over millions of years, they became bigger and bigger and harder and harder, and eventually became Onyx. Next, I made an effort to create the prehistoric shark Pokemon that is ancestor of both Garchomp and Sharpedo. It's a giant Megalodon Pokemon, who was the boss of the sea, but eventually split into a shark that became faster at the expense of defense, and a Pokemon that eventually walked on land. I mean, the first half of the process is basically just making a Sharpedo with a body, but instead of putting those fins near its eyes, this predator has huge fins that eventually became Garchomp's arms a million years later. Keep in mind, every animal has some kind of body part that is just a remnant of an animal we evolved from, like the tailbone that humans have. I'm giving it Garchomp's star, and eventually, everything I do from now on is just an effort to give this Pokemon Garchomp elements, since at this point, it just looks like a Sharpedo evolution, when in fact, Sharpedo evolved from this Pokemon. I decided to give it growths on the fins that look like plane engines, since both Sharpedo and Garchomp resemble those fighter planes with shark faces. Obviously, there are spikes everywhere that become the spikes on Garchomp, and also the spikes that are awakened in Mega Sharpedo. I decided to make its upper lip more like Garchomp's. I refined it a bit and gave it more of the lines that Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp have. And there you have it, the water dragon type, Megalodon from Mangol and Megalodon. It has rough skin and strong jaw. It ruled the sea 10 million years ago and split into two different species, one that became faster and more hostile, eventually becoming smaller but more aggressive, gaining the dark type. The other shark actually grew legs, became super smart, and decided it was strong enough to become a land and sky predator. And thus, the first Garchomp was born! Now I believe it's time for a short lesson about the Tiktaalik! Recently, the fossils of ancient four-legged fish were discovered. This animal, known as the Tiktaalik, and others like it, were the first fish to walk on land, eventually becoming the ancestors to amphibians, who laid their eggs on land, which became the ancestors to reptiles, birds, and eventually mammals. Without these good guys, we may have not been born. So I thought it would make sense that such a Tiktaalik Pokemon would exist in the real world, so I made one. I hypothesized that this Pokemon would have evolved from the ancient Relicanth and became the ancestor of Quagsire, what I believe to be the first amphibian Pokemon. So let's make this fish. It's basically just a Tiktaalik. I made a long body with a flat face, added some Relicanth fins that actually resemble Quagsire hands. Of course, we gotta give this dude a derpy whooper face and the tail fin of a salamander. Then I added the patterns that this fish got from its ancestor Relicanth, as well as those face lines, some more fins, and then two extra dots that eventually become the Wi-Fi symbol on Whooper's belly. And there you have it, the walking fish Pokemon, Waktalik. Give this guy some love. He did his gosh darn best and became the ancestor to all amphibian, reptile, bird, and mammal Pokemon. It's water ground type. It has water absorb or unaware. It's actually pretty fast on both land and sea. Its defenses are good, but its attack stats aren't the best. He's a slimy boy though. He'll jump right out of your hands. Finally, it's time to make Simiseer redeemable, or, or actually kind of the opposite. It may make you hate him more to know that it had an ancestor that was much cooler, but eventually split and evolved into Simiseer. They still exist in a distant region, but this Simiseer ancestor actually evolved from Infernape. Yeah, let's make this Pokemon. It got its ears from Infernape with the shape of Simiseer. It has hair like a Simiseer, but it's long like the fire of its ancestor Infernape. I wanted to give this guy a pissed face. This guy is angry for some reason. It has the brows of an Infernape, but in the pattern of a Simiseer. It has white fur on its neck that it got from Infernape, but this will eventually become the white fur on Simiseer's neck. That's right, the smoky fur on Simiseer is a remnant of Infernape's white fur. Another sign that it evolved from Infernape is how 
Semi Seer's hidden ability is Blaze. Its body is basically the shape of an Infernape's, just plumper, and its tail is just a puffier, more fire like Infernape tail that will eventually evolve into a giant Semi Seer tail. Now, its face is much handsomer, but I gotta tell ya, I had trouble with the hands and legs for some reason. Like Monferno and Chimchar, I gave it a different amount of toes and fingers. I gave it pants like Semi Seer, and the final product is basically just a badass Semi Seer. The fire fighting type, Flamate, which comes from Flame and Primate. It's constantly seeking opponents to spar with. It wants friendly and honorable fights. Flamate wants a playmate. Now here's what's interesting. Simi Seer, like the other Simis, is based on Japanese punks and the three wise monkeys. The pans represent see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. But once they evolve, they represent groups of Japanese punks that fail and succumb to those evils. Simi Seer is based on the Japanese bike gangs who rev up their engines and are obnoxiously loud. But Flamate here hasn't failed. It never cheats and only wants to fight honorably. It doesn't lie, therefore keeping its promise to speak no evil. The the ones who stray from this path and no longer want to fight honorably eventually become punks and evolve into the Simi Seer family. But I hope you stay honorable and decide to like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified when it comes out and check the description for all the music I used, the links to my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early which you can also get by clicking the join button. And last but not least, follow me on Twitter. Bye!